Hello everyone, welcome back once again to this educational channel called Learn Bio with Janet. Today we'll be discussing a Form 4 topic, Form 4 Biology for KSSM Syllabus, Chapter 10, Transport in Humans and Animals. However, Form 5 students studying the KBSM Syllabus can also use this uh, video as a revision, revision for their uh, Chapter 1, Form 5 topic as the contents here are similar to that of their syllabus. So the topic concern or subtopic concern is 10.1, Types of Circulatory Systems, Part 3. And in Part 3, we'll be studying uh, about the circulatory systems of humans. And then we'll make a comparison of the circulatory systems of the various organisms such as the frog, the fish, insects, and also mammals or humans. The learning outcomes for this video are as follows. After this lesson, we should be able to compare and contrast the circulatory systems in the various complex multicellular organisms such as insects, fish, amphibians, and also humans. In the previous video, Types of Circulatory Systems Part 2, we have already discussed the circulatory systems of insects, fish, and amphibians. So for this video, we'll be discussing the circulatory systems of humans. Let us refresh our memory about the types of circulatory systems in organisms. So there are two main types of circulatory systems in organisms. Firstly, the open circulatory system found in the invertebrates such as insects, prawns and snails. And then we have the closed circulatory system that is found in the vertebrates such as the fish, amphibians, reptiles, mammals and birds. So the closed circulatory system is divided into the single circulatory system found in fishes and the double circulatory system which is found in the other vertebrates. Now the double circulatory system is divided into the incomplete circulatory system found in amphibians and reptiles and the complete circulatory system found in mammals and birds. So we are going to discuss the complete circulatory system found in humans. Now, in the previous video, we have already discussed the open circulatory system in insects. We have also discussed some types of closed circulatory systems, that is, for fish and for the frog. For the fish, it has one atrium and one ventricle, and the type of circulatory system is called a single closed circulatory system. For the frog, it has two atria and one ventricle in the heart. That means it has three chambers and it has a double incomplete closed circulatory system. Now, for this video, we're going to study the circulatory system of humans. Humans have a four-chambered heart with two atria and two ventricles. And the circulatory system is called a double complete closed circulatory system. Let us now discuss the circulatory system of humans. Humans have a closed, double, complete circulatory system. So remember these three words, closed, double and complete. We have to memorize the definitions for these terms too. In order to be able to explain them, explain what they are in the essay and structured questions. So in the closed, circulatory system, the blood is always contained in the closed blood vessels, meaning that there are no open ends in these blood vessels that are continuous. The blood vessels are continuous throughout the whole body. There are no open ends. And in this way, the blood is circulated and distributed to all parts of the body. That means that they're always in the closed blood vessels. This means that there are no open ends where the, uh, for the blood vessels, where the whole blood can flow out and bathe the cells. 
this does not occur in the closed circulatory system compared to the open circulatory system where the hemolymph can flow out from the hemolymph vessels that are open-ended and bathe the cells in the hemocyte. So in the closed circulatory system, the blood is always contained in the closed blood vessels and never uh, flows out from the blood vessels as a uh, whole blood. Now let's look at the word double. So in the double circulatory system, the blood flows through the heart twice in a complete circulation. Huh? So we start from this point here. We see that the deoxygenated blood flows into the right atrium and right ventricle. And after that, it is transported to the lung capillaries where it receives oxygen. And then it flows back through the pulmonary vein, again into the heart, huh? into the left atrium and then the left ventricle. And after that, it is pumped under high pressure to the systemic capillaries before it flows back to the heart. So we can see that the blood flowed through the right side of the heart first, and then through the left side of the heart, two times, uh, before it flows back to the same point here. So in the double circulatory system, blood flows through the heart twice. That's why it's called a double uh, circulatory system, twice in a complete cycle. Now, another uh, point to note is that in the double circulatory system, blood flows in two directions, forming two circulations. The first direction is shown by the white arrows. Okay, When blood flows from the heart to the lung capillaries and then back to the heart. This is called the pulmonary circulation. In the second circulation, blood flows from the heart to the systemic capillaries and back to the heart. This is called the systemic circulation. Not systematic, huh? it's systemic. So these are the two circulations in the double circulatory system, the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. All right. Now the word complete, what does it mean? So in a complete circulatory system, the blood that is oxygenated, okay, denoted by the red color here, does not mix with the blood that is deoxygenated, uh, denoted by the blue color here. And this is because the two ventricles, the left ventricle and right ventricle, are completely separated by a septum. Completely. That's why it's called a complete circulatory system. Huh? The septum is completely, uh, the septum completely separates the heart into the left side and the right side. So this septum is a muscular wall. And around the center of the heart here that divides the heart into the left and right side and it's very important to separate the two parts so that oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood do not mix in the heart. Next let's look at the structure of the heart. So the heart is a four-chambered heart with two atria, the right atrium and the left atrium, and then two ventricles, the right ventricle and then the left ventricle. And these two ventricles are completely separated by a septum, unlike that of the frog. Huh? Frog only has one ventricle, and so this is a disadvantage because for frog, for the frog, the oxygenated blood mixes with the deoxygenated blood in the single ventricle and less oxygen is then transported to the cells. That's for the frog. That has an incomplete circulatory system. Right, 
So now let's talk about the blood flow in humans or blood circulation. So blood flows in two directions, forming the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. Let's start with the pulmonary circulation. In the pulmonary circulation, blood is transported from the heart and this is deoxygenated blood. So deoxygenated blood is transported from the heart to the lungs where exchange of gases occur and then oxygenated blood flows back to the heart. Then in the systemic circulation, blood is transported from the heart through the aorta. Now this is oxygenated blood. Huh? So we say oxygenated blood is transported from the heart to the body tissues where oxygen diffuses into the cells and carbon dioxide diffuses out of the cells into the blood. Next, the deoxygenated blood flows back to the heart. Right. Now if you're asked to explain the pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation in detail, then you have to state the chambers of the heart involved and also the blood vessels involved. Uh, name the blood vessels. Be more specific. Okay, let's say we are asked to explain in more detail for uh, essay or structured question. So in the pulmonary circulation, the deoxygenated blood is pumped from the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery. Here. And then the pulmonary artery transports the blood to the lungs where oxygen diffuses into the blood and carbon dioxide diffuses out of the blood into the lungs to be expelled. Next, oxygenated blood flows through the pulmonary vein back to the heart, to the left atrium of the heart. And then it flows into the left ventricle. Now in the systemic circulation, systemic circulation, huh? systemic means there's something to do with, it has something to do with body tissues, okay? Systemic capillaries are the capillaries that are uh, found among uh, the body tissues or in the body tissues. Right, so let's talk about systemic circulation. Oxygenated blood is pumped out from the left ventricle at high pressure into the aorta, which transports the blood to the body tissues. Then in the body tissues, oxygen and nutrients will, be, will filter out from the blood and diffuse into the cells, whereas carbon dioxide diffuses from the cells into the blood. Finally, the deoxygenated blood flows back to the right atrium of the heart through the vena cava. So that is the systemic circulation. So we've discussed the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. Now let's talk about the advantages of the human circulatory system. Okay, so maybe that part, we will leave it to the uh, slides that are coming up. Let's go through all that we have discussed so far about the human circulatory system. Let us now go through the notes based on what was discussed just now. Firstly, humans have this type of circulatory system, a double complete closed circulatory system. The meaning of the word closed circulatory system is that blood is always contained in the closed blood vessels that are continuous and in this way the blood flows and is circulated throughout the whole body. In a double circulatory system, the blood flows through the heart twice in a complete cycle. It also means that the blood flows in two directions, forming two circulations. Firstly, the pulmonary circulation, in which blood flows from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart. And then we have the systemic circulation, in which blood flows from the heart to the systemic capillaries and body tissues and then back to the heart. 
Humans have a complete circulatory system, meaning that the blood that is oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood do not mix in the heart. Oxygenated and deoxygenated blood do not mix in the heart. This is because the two ventricles, the left and right ventricles, are completely separated by a septum. Now, the structure of the human heart. A human heart has four chambers. It is a four-chambered heart with two atria and two ventricles. The two ventricles, the right and left ventricles, are completely are separated completely by a septum. Blood circulation. Blood flows in two directions, forming the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. That's why it's called a double circulatory system. So, A, the pulmonary circulation. It transports deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs to receive the oxygen from the environment. So, there, gas exchange of gases occur, occurs. Carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the blood and be expelled to, into the environment, whereas oxygen will diffuse into the blood from the environment. Next, oxygenated blood flows back to the heart. B, in the systemic circulation, blood flows, the oxygenated blood flows from the heart to the body tissues where oxygen diffuses into cells and after that, the deoxygenated blood flows back to the heart through the veins. Here is a more detailed explanation for the two circulations. A. Pulmonary circulation. The oxygenated blood is pumped from the right ventricle of the heart into the pulmonary artery. So we state the blood vessels and the chambers of the heart that are involved. And after that, the deoxygenated blood is transported by the pulmonary artery to the lungs, where exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide occurs. Next, the oxygenated blood flows back to the left atrium of the heart through the pulmonary veins and from the left atrium into the left ventricle. B. The systemic circulation. Oxygenated blood is pumped from the left ventricle of the heart under high pressure into the aorta, which transports the blood to the body tissues where oxygen and nutrients diffuse into the cells. Next, the deoxygenated blood flows back to the right atrium of the heart through the vena cava. Now let's look at the advantages of the human circulatory system. Why is it superior and so much better than the circulatory systems of the other vertebrates like frog and fish? So humans have a closed double complete circulatory system. Now for the closed circulatory system, what is the advantage? Well, in a closed circulatory system, compared to an open circulatory system, the closed circulatory system has higher pressure, higher blood pressure, so that blood can flow faster in the closed circulatory system, compared to the open circulatory system of insects, where the pressure of the hemolym is low and the flow of the hemolym is slow. Next, let's look at the word double. What is the advantage of a double circulatory system? Now, frogs and mammals have both have double circulatory system. Okay, so we've discussed that the advantage of the double circulatory system uh, in the previous video. But let's look at it again. So for the double circulatory system, oxygenated blood is pumped by the heart from the left ventricle to body tissues. That means that the blood that is oxygenated from the lungs flows back to the heart so that it can be pumped under high pressure from the heart into the blood vessels to the body tissues. So in this way, there's higher blood pressure and faster blood flow because the blood flows under high pressure.
and in this way more oxygen is transported to the body cells or oxygen is transported to the body cells at a higher rate okay at a faster pace so this will cause the respiration cellular respiration in the cells to be carried out more quickly and humans have a higher metabolic rate as a result of that they produce more energy for their activities so they are able to attain bigger sizes and they are able to maintain their optimum body temperature even when it is cold because they can produce enough heat energy to maintain the body temperature in a, in a cold environment now compare this with a fish the fish has a single circulatory system uh, which is the opposite of a which is different from a double circulatory system so in the single circulatory system after the blood receives oxygen for fish it receives oxygen from the gills huh? then the blood is oxygenated for fish huh? it does not the blood does not flow back to the heart for the fish after the blood is oxygenated after the blood has uh, flowed to the gills and received oxygen the oxygenated blood blood that's oxygenated flows directly to the systemic capillaries and the body tissues so it will flow under uh, lower blood pressure and also the blood flow is slower so the fish will receive uh, less oxygen for respiration okay the, the supply of oxygen is not so fast for the fish the supply of oxygen for the cells huh? now let's look at the advantage of the complete circulatory system compared to the incomplete the incomplete circulatory system is found in the frogs the amphibians now the advantage of the complete circulatory system is that the two ventricles uh, the left ventricle and the right ventricle are completely separated by the septum so that oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood do not mix in the heart at all this means that the blood that is pumped out from the left ventricle is completely oxygenated blood so it will contain more oxygen compared to blood that is mixed like that in the amphibian or frog okay so this will cause for the humans the blood is full of oxygen oxygenated blood that's not mixed huh, with the deoxygenated blood so more oxygen is transported to the cells for respiration and cellular respiration rate is higher so more energy is again produced for activities compared to the frog in which uh, the ventricle there's only a single ventricle the ventricle is not separated into the right and left sides completely so when the oxygenated blood mixes with the deoxygenated blood for the frog the blood that is pumped out to the body cells will contain less oxygen right and this will cause cellular respiration in the frog to be slower so humans have the best uh, system of all the double the close double complete circulatory system so here is a review of all the acronyms that I've given you in the second video. IO, farm B is closed. IO stands for insect open circulatory system. Farm B stands for the vertebrates, fish, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and birds. So the vertebrates uh, have a closed circulatory system. All right. Now, then for the vertebrates, we have various uh, acronyms. Huh? seagulls catch fish so fish have a s for single and c for closed circulatory system frogs catch delicious insects stands for frogs have closed c for closed d for double and i for incomplete circulatory system humans catch delicious crabs so humans have closed c for closed d for double and the other C is for complete circulatory system. Uh, so these two 
frogs catch delicious insects and humans catch delicious crabs. Or if you uh, like something that is related to our our world situation, uh, the current world situation, all right, you can try this one. Humans conquer deadly COVID. Huh? Through vaccine, we'll conquer the deadly COVID if our vaccines are good and successful. So humans conquer deadly COVID. Okay? H for humans, a C for catch or conquer. Conquer stands for closed, D for double, and C for complete. So it's up to you which acronym you choose to use. But I find that it's very easy to remember if you keep on reviewing it every time. Huh? Every day or every every alternate day at first. Huh? Then after about a month, you can review it less frequently until it has gone into your long-term memory. Let us now look at a question that may come up in the essay or structured question section. Compare and contrast the blood circulatory systems of different organisms, it marks. Now, normally it will be uh, stated what two organisms you are going to compare or you're supposed to compare. Okay, so normally the comparison will be between two organisms such as the fish and humans or insects and amphibians of uh, amphibians and humans and so forth. Right, let's look at the answer. So we have to include the similarities and the differences. Okay, so uh, let's look at the answer. And one similarity will be one mark, one difference will be one mark, as is normally marked. Now, the circulatory system is found in many multicellular organisms, such as insects, fish, amphibians, humans, and birds. Take note that you cannot say the circulatory system is found in all multicellular organisms. Huh? Not all, because there are multicellular organisms that do not have a circulatory system. For example, the flat worm, which is small and flat, and so it can uh, obtain the oxygen by diffusion alone through its flat body, which has a large total surface area. Okay, so the flat worm does not have a circulatory system. It is a multicellular organism without a circulatory system circulatory system. Other than that, uh, other multicellular organisms include plants. Plants are multicellular organisms. They don't have a the normal circulatory system of animals. All right. So we can just say that the circulatory system is found in many multicellular organisms or maybe in the organisms that we are comparing. Okay. Such as insects, fish, amphibians, humans, and birds. Now the circulatory system consists of a heart that pumps blood in the vertebrates, the circulatory fluid is called blood, or hemolym, which is the circulatory fluid in the in the insects. Hemolym is the blood-like nutritious fluid eh, in insects. So the circulatory system has a heart and it has a fluid, eh, either blood or hemolym, which transports substances. Now the circulatory system transports nutrients and waste products. Okay, uh, for the insect, the insect, we cannot write that the circulatory system transports oxygen. Eh? Remember that, okay? For, for insects, oxygen is transported by the tracheal system, not the circulatory system. Now, the heart has valves to ensure that blood flows in one direction only. Okay, so for all the organisms here, the heart, their hearts have valves. Let us go on to the differences. What is the type of circulatory system for insects? Insects have an open circulatory system. Now, uh, some books write open blood circulatory system. Wrong. Huh? There's no blood inside the insect, right? It should be open circulatory system only. Huh? Don't write the word open blood circulatory system. Okay? Please take note of that correction. So it should be open circulatory system. And for the fish, amphibians, and humans, they all have the closed blood circulatory system. Okay, they have blood huh, for the fish, amphibians, and humans. Now, you may be uh, expected to explain the term open and closed. So, in the open circulatory system, 
The hemolymph is not always confined or contained in the hemolymph vessels, but it will flow out from the open-ended vessels into the hemocyl or body cavity where it bathes the cells. As for the closed circulatory system, the blood is always contained in the closed blood vessels which are continuous and in this way the blood is circulated and distributed to the whole body or parts of the body. Going on to the second difference, do they have single or double circulatory systems? Now for insects, these terms, these terms do not apply. Huh? For insects, we just say that they have an open circulatory system. Huh? Open circulatory system, only one term. So for fish, the fish has a single circulatory system where the blood flows in the blood vessels and through the heart once in one complete circulation. Basically, the blood flows through the heart once in one complete circulation. That's the meaning of a single circulatory system. And also, we can say that the blood flows in only one direction. Okay. Now, for amphibians and humans, they both have the double circulatory system in which blood flows in the blood vessel and through the heart twice in one complete circulation. So, blood flows through the heart twice in one complete circulation. Also, the blood flows in two directions, forming two circulations. So, the amphibians have two circulations, namely a, palmo, a palmocutaneous circulation where blood flows from the heart to the lungs and skin and back to the heart. And b, the systemic circulation where blood flows from the heart to the body tissues and back to the heart. For humans, they also have a double circulatory system, right? And for them also, the blood flows in two directions, forming two circulations. The two circulations in humans are A, a pulmonary circulation, where blood flows from the heart to the lungs and back to the heart. And B, a systemic circulation, where blood flows from the heart to the systemic capillaries and body tissues and then back to the heart. Now the third difference, the number of heart chambers. For insects, the heart is made up of many cavity segments or chambers and the heart is tubular in shape. For fish, it has two chambers in the heart, one atrium and one ventricle. Amphibians have three chambers in the heart, two atria and one ventricle. Finally, humans have four chambers in the heart, two atria and two ventricles. Lastly, the separation of oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood. Now, this only applies to the organisms with the double circulatory system. That is, that is the amphibians and humans. So for amphibians, they have the double incomplete circulatory system where some oxygenated blood mixes with the deoxygenated blood in the single ventricle because there's only one ventricle. But for humans, the heart, uh, the circulation or circulatory system is the complete circulatory system where oxygenated blood in the left ventricle does not mix with the deoxygenated blood in the right ventricle as there is a septum to separate the left ventricle from the right ventricle completely. So that's all for our video uh, lesson today. Thanks for watching. Please share, like and subscribe. And I'll be going on to the structure of the heart in the next video. Goodbye for now.